ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Welcome to another Wipeathon 3000 presentation. It's in Shadow Fight and Keep again. This is for a guy by the name of Commander Springvale. Hmm. You may remember him. He was in the original version. He is now the third boss of this particular instance, and he can be a bit of a pain. He's no Baron Ashbury, certainly. But he's difficult enough to justify this video because there's a lot of things going on in this fight that you do have to be extremely aware of. As always with Wipeathon 3000 presentations, the first wipe will be shown at normal speed and then all of the other wipes will be shown at 200% all the way up to the successful attempt which will be shown in the full dungeon run video. Okay, mechanics that you have to worry about. First things first, you will summon adds periodically through the fight. Those adds honestly have to be killed. There's really not a lot of choice in that because those adds have a tendency of healing the boss by using that unholy empowerment ability. They will power him up to three stacks of unholy empowerment and then he seems to be able to heal himself. He may also do other unpleasant things that we didn't really notice. The adds have to be taken down. He will also do that large purple flame thing which has a very odd name to it. It's called the Shield of the Perfidious, and if you stand in it, you will die horribly. It is a sort of front cone right there, and the tank will have to eat it because it tracks on him, but of course, you have to turn that away from the group, otherwise the group will die horrendously. He also has a Death and Decay style thing on the floor, which does a dot and also slows. As we discovered, it's not really worth running out of that just because of the amount of time that it takes, so it's not a particularly good idea. He also has a unpleasant ability that actually leeches maximum health from the group, and you saw it there. It's not something that can be gotten rid of, it's not a curse or a magic effect or anything like that, so you simply have to deal with it. When you engage the boss, you should take the adds down as quickly as possible. They both appear to have the unholy empowerment ability. We thought at this point that it was just the officer that did it, but as it turns out, the Tormented Guardsman can do it as well, so focus them both down. As we discovered later on, they can be shackled, so I would strongly recommend that you do so. He'll then summon adds into the fight. Now, what I'm doing here, it wasn't exactly the best placement of it, but I get better on it later on, is to use the Ring of Frost, which is the new mage ability. Now, this used to be Curtain of Frost, and it used to be terrible. Now it isn't. It's a massive great ring, and if they run into the ring, then they they will be frozen so it's an unbelievably good crowd control ability and if they happen to be on the outside of the ring and they sort of run into the rim of it they'll get frozen if it gets broken they get frozen again while the ring is up it's unbelievably good for this fight and i would strongly strongly recommend it so we're hitting him fairly hard here, but what we weren't doing is interrupting the unholy empowerments, which meant that he was getting heals. Now, you'll notice that this guy does have less health than the other bosses in here, but that's because he constantly has adds, so it all balances out. The tank did kind of screw up there, which resulted in some of us dying, but hey, like I said, everyone makes mistakes when it comes to wiping, and I'm certainly guilty of quite a few of them myself, so no one's going to blame him for that, I would hope. Now, the main problem that we have here is we are trying to DPS down the adds as they come in, but we don't get enough DPS on the boss, and eventually we just get ground into fine paste. What you have to watch out for is grabbing those adds, and as we discover, and you will see later on in this video, this room is actually non-ideal for fighting in, because it makes it much harder to pick up those adds. You'll see in a number of these wipe attempts that we end up pulling aggro, at one point we just try kiting. We said, hey, just burn it down, it'll be fine. I mean, this is a nice way of doing things right here. You see, I managed to freeze them both up and it was easy to pick them up. But bear in mind, that's not going to work if you don't have a mage. And the Ring of Frost has a fairly significant cooldown. So you might get to use it twice a fight if you're lucky, but you're going to be dealing with a lot more adds than that. Okay, so we dealt with those fairly well, but as you can see, we gave him that empowerment, and he healed himself almost up to full. It is not good at all. You have to stop that from happening. You do need a lot of interrupters. The worst thing is that they can both the ads can do it, so potentially you could end up missing one. The best thing you can do is to try and crowd control one of those ads. It is undead, so... There are a limited number of crowd control effects that you can use. Shackle is obviously the most reliable. A hunter trap would also work. 
pushing our way down here and we're just not doing well enough in terms of the DPS. We end up losing one DPS fairly early on in the fight, which means that we're totally boned because you have to have a very strong DPS on those ads. If you don't focus them down and if you do split your DPS, which is what was happening in the early attempts before we decided, well, we're going to take the officers first and then the Wailing Guardsmen, then you'll end up in a massive amount of trouble. It's imperative that you kill one very, very quickly just to avoid getting those extra stacks of unholy empowerment. There was a fairly challenging achievement which involves stopping him from getting any at all. Admittedly, that's not all that hard if you have Shackle or Reliable CC that works on Undead in your group, because then at least you can Shackle one of them and just keep interrupting the other, and you don't have to switch between the two. That would be a recommended way of doing things. And, oh, look at the pretty particle effects. No doubt that's going to break a few people's computers. <laughs> we shall see. We're doing all right here, but our DPS is still not as good as it should be, and we have problems with picking him up. Moved all the way over there, which is probably not the best of ideas. He's done that just to try and pick up those additional ads. So what I will show you in a few wipes' time is us trying it in a different location. You can fight this guy basically any way you so desire. You might also have noticed that that cone doesn't actually hit where it appears. It's very odd. I supposedly was standing in it, but I clearly wasn't. You can see it goes in a frontal cone like that, so even though I appeared to be in the purple stuff, it didn't kill me. Still, we're doing fairly well, but we're allowing too many stacks of that empowerment. You can see we're not really focusing our DPS enough on this, and he keeps bringing in the ads, and we're just getting worn down. You've just got to be much, much better with the ads. You have to focus. You have to be so very careful with it. And you've got to make sure he doesn't get those stacks. We're starting to interrupt them now, which is helping an awful lot. But still, we're allowing stacks to get through, which means by the time that the ads are down, then he's back with maybe 400, 500k more health than he had previously. And you just end up dying. Bear in mind, of course, you're taking that constant damage throughout the fight. And that damage, needless to say, does actually scale because it is percentage. It's cool that they have a scaling damage mechanic. I do wonder, though, if this boss is still very much over-gearable at some point. We shall see. Now, you see, we modified our tactics right there. Once we discovered that they were shackleable, we'd heard that they weren't, and it's possible in a previous version they weren't, but they certainly are right now. So we shackled one, nuked the other, and here comes the first one, placed the Ring of Frost in the middle right there to catch both of them. So that's helped an awful lot. Also gives me some extra crits because I'm rolling with Frost spec at the moment. Bring that down as quickly as possible. We weren't tanking that one. We actually decided we'd just kite it around a little bit, but it really does help if you tank it. Like I said, this room is non-ideal for that purpose because it makes picking them up a lot harder. Now, once we finish this wipe, I think I'll show you some in the corridor to the side, which is where we decided to move. And as far as I can tell, that seems to be the optimum place to do it. Aside from that, we are doing fine here with the exception of interrupting those stacks. We did at least get him below 2 million, which is a good start. But our interrupts are still not as good as they should be and our focus isn't. Plus... You saw right there the problem with the idea of just kiting them around, that you just have to keep moving, and sometimes you'll get that target is behind you, you can't do anything like that, and hey, you also end up all over the freaking room, which means that if he has to move it and suddenly you eat a cone, then you are very, very dead indeed. Okay, let's have a look at it in the hallway to the side, shall we? As you can tell, we're coming to the end of the video, which means that this was the last wipe before a successful kill. So moving here made a ton of difference, as we did discover. It's always cool to be able to learn fights with absolutely no prior knowledge to them, which is mostly what's happening in the beta. There's not an awful lot of documentation provided by anyone, which is, of course, why I'm providing these videos for you to hopefully give you an impression. Now, the nice thing about this is that it forces those ads to come in both from that side so we were able to catch them very nicely there in the ring of frost that disabled them very well indeed and it also made tanking and picking them up an absolute joke now you can also see that the tank is just standing in the green stuff right there that is apparently how you should do it there was no point trying to get out of it it is it just makes you far far too slow also, in an area like this, I spec'd back to fire for the sole purpose of using a little bit of area of effect. Because, of course, Living Bomb, and since Blast Wave is very cheap, is handy for doing damage to all three targets and keeping the pressure on them. 
Okay, ladies and gents, that was a Wipeathon 3000 right there for Commander Springvale. Hopefully you've got an idea of what you need to do for that. The full successful attempt is part of the Shadow Fang Keep Heroic Full Run video that is coming up very soon indeed. And if it's already there, then hey, congratulations. You should see a little annotation at the top if it's ready. If it's not ready, then, well, there won't be any annotation. My name's been Total Biscuit, and I'll see you next time.